Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Happy you are part of the program today. It's mums, the fall mums, moments away. But first, farm defense. Farm and garden in the ultimate comfort. Farmer's defense has lightweight and durable sleeves made to protect you against the elements. While farming, farmer sleeves offers unparalleled protection of arms and skin for any farmer, gardener, or outdoor worker. Say goodbye to irritated skin and sunburns in the garden. Their sleeves offer cooling comfort and protection against the elements outdoors. An alternative to thick clothing, farmer's defense is made of wicking material with UBF protection factor 50 plus to protect you from allergens and scratches. To find all their great products and more, visit farmersdefense.com. So, mums, they're, yes. very, they're very popular. The plant, not the the European version no. of a parent. And I feel like, I don't know. If that was not funny, I guess. No. Okay. I feel like I keep seeing them more and more in, outside of the stores. So I don't know if they're becoming more popular or I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I would personally go to my local garden center to buy my mom's then outside of the old, uh, you know, wobbly hog or whatever. Uh-huh. But... Um, <laughs> Whatever, whatever works for you. Well, perennial mums, if well taken care of, can bloom year yearly. Yeah. Potted, harsh variety can be can withstand the winter months to prevent your plants move uh, to to preserve your plants. Move them indoors in a cool, frost free free environment, if possible, like a garage. If they're in a container, so let's start with that. We've got a bunch of different options when it comes to mums. Right. So you want to just determine when when to plant and or when to, um, I guess you want to determine what kind of mum you want. Do you want a, um, just a once a year mum that you go and purchase? One and, and done. You, yeah. One and done. Do you want something? Which that's I think I think most people that's what the, that what happens. It's like yeah. Mother Day flowers. Right. Yeah. Well, they want them sometimes for their their like um, Halloween or the fall, fe- fall festival fall festival decor. decorations. Yeah. yeah. They don't want the commitment of a mom in their garden because they want it's it not a child. It's not a child. <laughs> yeah. They don't want but they don't want it there. They want it on their porch. With, There's a purpose their, and a means and when it's over with, they're done with it. Yeah, next yeah. to their gourds and their pumpkins and their corn stalks and right. whatever else, their little cornucopia situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is totally fair. But say you're like, Hey, you know what, this mom is really pretty and I really like it. You can plant that mum and it will it will uh it will grow. It will grow and it can be grown year round. Or it can it can survive year round. Your mums can stay in the ground if you want them to. If you're going to plant them in the ground, provide it. You give them plenty of mulch after the first frost. Cut them back. Give them a lot of fro- a lot of mulch, and uh, just be sure to cut off the dead stems and bury them in mulch shortly after the first frost. And that will preserve most of them, based on your variety. Right. Yeah. That's that's based on the variety, and then. Um you want to make sure they're in full sun. Now, if you get them just for your porch uh, or something, that might yeah. Not if you're be just going to use them for a certain right. time, it really minimum. This this doesn't apply. Yeah. Now they do have a sh- a shallow root system, so you want to make sure you are watering them frequently, and this will help um, keep them looking good for longer. And you know those colors will pop, and then even pruning them when the when the individual flowers, I think they look kind of bushy to me, but when the individual flowers, you know, start to look kind of sad, you can go ahead and, and prune them a little bit and that will help brighten, brighten up the whole bunch. And that's helpful too. If you are going to plant them, you want to mulch around them. Um, and that's helpful. I mean, you can mulch the ones in the pots too. That's an option as well, but most people aren't going to do that. No. So, uh, you know, there's why, why a mum? What's special about a mum? It's the uniqueness, it's the flower, it's kind of the the decor, it's the tradition that falls here. That's what we do. We get mums. Um, there's there's multiple different varieties, like 13 plus different varieties of mums you can choose from. Now, based on your region, you're going to have the mums that are more fitted for your particular climate. You're not going to have them, you know, it's like... You're not going to have the, the big box stores may be slightly different, but your independent garden center is going to have stuff that's going to be that will work in your yard. They're not going to have something if you're in North Dakota, they're not going to have something that grows great in San Diego. It's not going to work. Yeah, no, they and they shouldn't. That would be that would not be good. Um, yeah. So there's lots of options for the mums and the colors. And um, I think that 
that it makes sense to to get them from the store and then create a little a fall scene but maybe you're like curious about planting them and you want to do that you can do that in the fall so you do it before what would hopefully be your your first freeze and what you do is you plant them a couple weeks before and then you would make sure that you have them well watered in and get them a little bit well established and then once they're a little bit well established you can prune them back we're talking about from seed type of thing no, no if oh, you just plant the one from the store okay plant the one from the store yeah. okay okay yeah just clarifying there because we got i got confused on the uh, the how to there and then once once spring comes along yes and you can mulch over them um once spring comes along you want to actually fertilize them and you um, you can use like a high phosphorus fertilizer because they have those naturally shallow roots and that will help with the root growth. Now let's talk about the lasting of the bloom. Everybody wants blooms to last longer. So how do we do this? Bloom, they need six hours of sunlight or more a day to, and to get as much heat and sun as possible in order to get those blooms in order to produce. Once the blooms have ran their course, then you can deadhead them to get them off so they don't look cluttered with the rest of the bouquet of flowering uh, heads on your mum plant. So you want to keep that in that in, in perspective. You want to, as much heat, sun, and deadhead to keep the plant going and moisture as possible. If you're in a smaller container and you feel that you need to up pot, then you should do that if you're going to have them last as long as possible if you're not going to put them in the ground. Yeah, definitely. You want to get them repotted and or um, maybe you you have a planter area already that you put them in. Just make sure that when you do replant them that you're putting them in somewhat fresh soil. You're loosening the roots and you're planting them um, not too deep, just kind of right where, where they're planted in the original container you got them. Now, what we're saying about they love the heat, they like that sunlight, but keep your mums cool for long-lasting blooms while the mums... They'll want six hours of sunlight. You want to be cautious about the heat. I mean, if it's like, you know, 90 degrees, that you want to keep them in the shade. Shortening their bloom cycle. If the days are still 75 degrees or warmer, put your plants in a place that will receive partial shade. Uh, prolonging the potted mums for heat stress will keep them from, uh, from blooming longer. So there's a balance there. You want moderate sunlight, warmth, but you, we can get sun. And be 60 degrees outside, and it'd be very comfortable, and that's what these moms are looking for. Anything above 75 degrees in most areas, they're not going to be happy. That's why it's a fall plant. It's not a summer or spring plant. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. You do want to make sure that you look for plants that... So, you know, when we talk about picking vegetable plants, you don't want to pick vegetable plants that have showy flowers on them. With mm -hmm. moms, you want to... By the showy ones. The ones that are already out, ready, yeah. already displaying what they have available. Yes. Yes. The, mu the money mums. The money, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, like, pest and diseases. Though it's fall, we still have problems with pest and disease. Yes. So, we can get leaf spot, we can get powdery mildew, and various and, and viruses that uh, cause problems on these plants. The best treatment of prevention is don't crowd your plants. Give them a lot of air circulation. They're not a shrub. You're not going to get 14 in a little you know area. More is not better in this in, in in this particular situation. Give them plenty of air, plenty of sun, and moisture remains on the leaves to create that that um, breeding ground for the disease. You want to make sure, just like your vegetables, they have air circulation and that they can dry off so they don't develop these disease problems that some people find and have because they think if four is good eight's better will really make this bed flower bed look really good well what you've created is you might as well just put a tarp over top of them and, and make a sign like choking them and choking them out yeah. yeah what you can do no matter what kind of mums you buy if you buy them just for the look or if you buy them to plant to to become a perennial you can separate them because they have those shallow roots they do separate very easily separate or divide, divide yeah yeah, yeah. So divide them up. So if you are like, hey, I like, you know, this combination of yellow and orange and red, and I want to put like three here and three here and da 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 da, 
you can do that very easily. Now, rabbits and deer usually don't eat the mums, so that's good for you if you have that problem. Fuzzy uh, leaves and blooms. They much prefer other plants in your garden. But you can use Deer Defeat at DeerDefeat.com and prevent all of those problems using coupon code RADIO to save 10% on your order. So that's a good thing that you don't have that problem of, of animals getting to those particular plants. So mums, have you ever grown them before? This might be the year to do such. Go to your independent garden center, find what they have available, ask Ask questions. That's why we're telling you to go independent garden center because big box stores, they don't know anything. The independent garden center, they care about what you buy and a good independent garden center will prevent you from buying plants that won't work for your area, your, your backyard, even though you may want to. They will lose. They would rather you not make. They would rather not make the sale than make the sale and you have you a dead plant in a couple of weeks because you put it in a place that wasn't happy. Well, yeah, definitely. So you want to, I think, I think some of the big box stores do have some sort of plant guarantee, but the independent garden centers actually do, do care more. Their plant guarantee at the big box stores is more about, you know, turnover, corp, corp, yeah, corporate turnover than anything else. But anyway, I digress. Well, then big box stores at the end of, and we've seen this online, these big box stores at the, at a certain time period, they take all the garden plants, dump them in a dumpster, even though they're perfectly fine because the time's up, they're moving on to the next thing and put on the shelf. I saw it with my own eyes when oh, yeah, I worked yeah, for that yeah. one company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. And they can't sell them discounted. They just because they, they lose too much. It's yeah. too much money to sell them discounted because they they they're so thin profit margins. We might talk about that. How how these things? Yeah, how a pineapple is ninety nine cents when it takes twenty four months to grow and it flies in three thousand miles. But anyway, and its tomato plant is three ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. summer is over, Holly. Kids are back in school. Dot, nights are getting colder, and the yard has been forgotten. And you shouldn't have done that. And here's why. Just because it's fall, we don't want to forget about our yards and those Japanese beetles either. They may be gone, but they're not far. Not only did they feast on your roses and berries this summer, they laid eggs on your turf so that they can start again next year. Take a stand with Phylum Scrub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granule that specifically targets scarab pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is grub gone easy to use, but it's the only non-chemical choice that is effective to control grubs. And the best part about it, it's non-toxic to bees and other pollinators, so you don't have to worry about toxifying their hives and killing them off when you apply it. It has zero label restrictions to use around flowering plants and other beneficial plants that the insects are going to need to be using grub gone from grubgone.com and fi or phylum bioproducts.com for more information please visit the wisconsin vegetable